welcome to A Game of Ice and Fire, a video series devoted to A Song of Ice and Fire war game by Cool Mini or Not. We cover all aspects of the hobby with tactics and list build videos, painting tutorials of varying levels, and battle reports. A small PSA before we start. There are many places where you can buy tactics boards that aren't just the one from the starter boxes. Art of War is one of those, and I've got the link to them in the description, but I really want to stress here that I'm not trying to advocate that this be the tactics board that you buy. There is a lot of manual work that comes with this one in order to get it functional, which some people might not appreciate, uh, but again, there's a lot of customizability that comes with this that I appreciate. So uh, if you are interested in this or interested in the process or you're kind of on the fence, just watch this video. Maybe it'll help you out. Um, at, the, at least it might be able to help you take care of the board you have now or are planning to purchase anyways. In this video we're going to be looking at the Art of War tactics board. Now they just come in this little bag here and they're in uh, four separate pieces. You've got the little flag, the frame that holds the models and stuff, and then the little base for the frame, and then the text piece that is just one big piece of acrylic. The front and back have mask on them. The backside mask is a little bit more like thick and durable and then the front side mask has a lot of properties that you would get out of masking tape so they just laser things into the acrylic through that mask and since the actual acrylics being exposed you can use like crayon or something to bring out that lettering but we're going to use paint so I'm mixing some Vallejo surface primer and some white to get a little bit of a gray base coat going because I don't like trying to paint red or red I mean white right away so I'm just going to spray and be very mindful that I'm spraying directly onto this piece. I don't want to angle it. The mask is, you know, it's adhesive all over, but I don't want to risk uh, shooting at an angle and then getting the paint to go underneath the mask because that's just a little bit more cleanup. And the reason why the mask is there is to make things easy. So we're going over and doing a really light uh, first shot of primer. I don't want to get this too thick because another thing that can happen with this is the uh, moisture from the paint can start to get absorbed through the masking tape and uh, that'll cause it to bubble up and get loose so all the paint you're going to be putting in there is going to slide underneath the, uh, um, the, the mask so it'll show up on the acrylic. So here I am going over with some white now I'm going to flip through the rest of the process that I kind of did here. I, I went through multiple times and hit it with white. And you want to try and be mindful of how many times you paint over this because the more paint that goes in, the more level it gets with the surface or it's able to catch some of the paint that's on the mask so that when you peel it, you have a bit more of a chance to take the paint off from the letters that are embossed in there. Um, so it's just be mindful of how much you're putting on. You want to do, it's kind of like painting a model. You want to do a lot of thin coats on this. You don't want to, you know, hammer down on the trigger and pull back to where you're, uh, you're really coating it with like a thick, very visibly wet layer of paint. Now you could do this with uh, hand paint too, you or with a brush, but you've just got to be really mindful of not sweeping up the, uh, the masking material. Um, I have seen the results that come by that come with crayons, and uh, I think it's not a bad idea or not a bad bad deal. It doesn't look terrible or anything, but I do um, I have some reservations about using crayon with this thing moving around a bunch and having models put on it. So I finished the uh, the white. So now we're gonna start peeling some of the mask off of the flag piece. Now when I'm hitting the areas that are that don't have any etching on it. I'm not being very careful or anything. I'm just kind of pulling it off without any real uh, process. Um, but when I get to the the little elephant skull, um, I'm being very careful with uh, with how I peel that off because I, if you peel too quickly, that's another way you could pull the paint out of the recess that you painted on. And I just use the tip of my scalpel here to take off some of the details or some of the smaller pieces that have a little bit of mask on there. I think with the the skull for the free folk set, um, there's that little there's like a little slit for like an eye socket or something like that. And the uh, the backing is a little bit more uh, tough, so you can 
just pull that out and and send it so now you can see we've got that really nice uh uh candy clear acrylic and it's kind of one of the reasons why i really wanted uh this set now <clears throat> i did overspray a little bit on the sides here and that's perfectly fine we're just using a really uh uh it's not very saturated um with alcohol but i put some uh paper towel into some out or just put a little bit of alcohol on paper towel and i'm going around the recesses and inside some of the gaps where the like tattered parts of the banner are just to clean off and now since the the there's the alcohol isn't wet so i'm able to just like sweep across the front of it and catch any uh little bits that might have uh pulled out so i'm reaffirming the the white on here now i think that on the free folk skull it's fine but or i was going over some parts that hadn't dried now when i looked at the skull i wasn't really happy with the color that i got out of it like the white on the olive drab just didn't look good to me so i decided to come back and do all the etching and lettering in a bone color i think those two colors go really well together and I, that's another thing that i like about this set is you can highly customize it i know if i ever get my hands on a lannister one i'll probably make it gold and that'll just be cool to do in my opinion i think it'll look really sweet so i'm taking some of the uh paint from my airbrush here because i'm just gonna hand paint in the skull now i'm at first i was really careful about how i was getting it in there but then i said you know what i can just wipe all the rest of this off so i get a little bit more um uh less detailed i guess with it is what i'm what, I, what i'm trying to say i get a little sloppy um and then i just wipe off the excess so we let that dry up and uh, we're left with the board as is. So now we can start peeling the mask off. And all these parts, the uh, the circles and the squares, they all have another etching completely around them. So you can peel this off and not really have to worry too much about how vigorously you peel it off. Um, it really is uh, just all those other pieces are going to uh, um, stay where they're at so that you can come back in later and be a little bit more mindful of how you take those off which we really do want to be mindful of how we peel that masking part off so now we're just getting the inner well the outer circle because this is kind of broken up into a couple pieces there's that small piece of mask in the on the outer, outer rim and then once you get past the detailing there's another piece of mask so i'm just going to go around and uh, peel all of that off too now there's um a lot of mask left in a little bit of the open gaps that kind of detail the uh, designs around the circle. We will come back with those to use us, use tools to get that out instead of our fingernails. Um, right now, I think using your fingernail works good because you're not going to mar up the, uh, the acrylic. So now I'm using the back edge of a scalpel to try and get these pieces. And here I, I notice that sometimes I scratch the acrylic and sometimes I end up scraping out some of the paint. So I end up switching into a couple different tools, uh, but the scalpel works good if you've got, or if that's all you've got available to you as a um, some kind of tool, I guess, just to scrape off these open areas. And I am at the same time, if there was any overspill here, I'm using a little bit of the scalpel to scra scrape some of that off. I would not recommend that because just wiping it with a really moist alcohol cloth is going to uh, remove that excess um, that excess paint for you so now we're going to the, the business end which is the uh, the actual text and here I'm being really careful around the words and there's a lot of um, small mask in between all the lettering like it's it's very tight so I have to try and figure out you know what it is that I'm gonna try and do to get this off um, I use my scalpel and I'm not really happy with the results. Uh, I use the back of my fingernail and that seemed to be okay. And I also used a rubber scal uh, sculpting tool and I wasn't really feeling that so much either. So honestly, I feel like using your fingernail and just going up and down and then side to side, you'll get those letters to uh, the little masking in between the letters to come off and uh like you can see me here doing it just to get the rest of it off and then i use the scalpel to pick out any mask that might be left in the um that might be might have gotten deposited into the recesses so here's that sculpting tool i was talking about this is just a rubber tipped 
thing and it, it wasn't quite getting the job done so it really is I feel like if you've got your fingernails pretty trim uh, you can use those to get the mask off of here without too many issues um, the lettering itself is a probably the most painful part of this process because it is so uh, small and the the mask is so tight on those like even on like the, the O's that are in there there's gonna be a little bit of mask in between those but again highly customizable piece so we've got the first uh, couple things or the, the first elements done here we're just gonna skip forward <laughs> to uh, sometime later when uh, I've got the entire board done now we've removed all the mask from all of the letters all of the symbols and all of the rings so what we need to do now is try and figure out how we're gonna stick this thing together because this the other part of this frame is not connected to this you could leave the tactics board as is if it behooved you but I like the way it looks when it's stacked and layered and I enjoy being able to uh, put certain things on there but you can see how sweet this acrylic is it's just really like it, it looks like hard it looks like it's candied really like it's it's just so satisfying to look at and I really think when you put the two together it uh it stay it it just looks nice. I mean, you can slap your NCUs in here. Don't have to worry about them sliding around. I mean, they won't stay in obviously when you tip them upside down, but uh now we got so there's a couple different ways you can glue these together. I'm using some I went to my local hardware store and picked up some Gorilla two-part epoxy that dries clear. Um whatever works best for you with those epoxies, but you just want to pay attention to um the wording on it if it says uh, cures to clear there's some that cure to gray some that cure to yellow you want clear on these so you try and squirt out the two tubes as best as you can and then spend 20 minutes cleaning the stupid nozzle up and you got to stir this thing for about for gorilla glue it's like 20 seconds but uh, i'm going to make sure that i give it a good amount of time just make sure you follow the directions on whatever you use you can also find acrylic glue that might work for this but i just didn't have the time or desire to try and look for it so um I'm just dabbing it on and you can see that I'm spreading it a little bit and this was my you know first time trying to do something like this I do not recommend spreading this stuff on I kind of recommend putting on like a small blob and I mean a small blob and let it let the the piece level itself out instead of trying to spread it around um, and also you see me using a paper towel here for any cleanup on this thing I highly I highly would recommend to not use paper towel because the the glue will pill or will, will tear the the glue or the epoxy clears or rips the paper towel and the the recessed cuts also pill the the paper towel as well so i would use a microfiber towel so i'm i've got this thing put together and i've got it leveled up now i'm just going to put a weight on it and and sit for a while so now i've waited my 30 minutes or so and I'm cleaning up the sides again, and I'm seeing that, you know, the pilling is happening. So I get out my microfiber towel, and I start clearing the sides and give the front a good wipe down, too. I think that all the pieces are pretty much, like, cured now as in terms of, like, the paint. So uh, give that a good wipe and, and keep it clean. Now we got this banner here, and you can see me pulling on this thing. I'm using a lot of pressure to pull on that, and this stuff is not coming apart. So here's the final product all put together and cured um, very durable uh, the everything looks cool and works well doesn't stick it's not tacky um, the uh, overall look is really sweet on this board uh, my one gripe is that this is the normal size tactics board and uh, there's a there's a noticeable size difference I think it's about an inch on each side is roughly it'll two inches maybe on the other side there but um, a lot of the troubles that could have that came from me removing the mask for the letters probably could have been avoided by increasing this to be the actual size of the tactics board um, I've saved the best part for last of course the unveiling of the mask on the back which is gonna give us that nice clear candied look and uh, I'm super happy with how this how this has turned out um there are many other places you can get tactics boards from uh this one is very hands-on in terms of getting it together but if you don't mind that process and you want something customizable 
this is probably the one you'll want to pick up. Uh, there are plenty of other people making these, so it really is dealer's choice. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. Um, here are some stills of this image, just or some stills of the board. You can kind of see on the corners where some of the spidering on the uh, um, on the epoxy happened, and that's what I get for spreading it around because it kind of made its own little veins. But where you see, uh, when you see, look at the bottom left corner, I've got the. Uh, that's where I put a blob essentially, and it really just like leveled itself out and got clear. Here's a bigger, here's a close up of the corner. Um, hopefully, it's a close up. It looks like it's just a chopped image. But um, when this is on the table, I really don't notice any of the cosmetic flaws with it, and it works perfectly. So uh, check out Art of War if this is something you're interested in, and remember, crayons will work for this too. So don't feel like you have to be married to the paint style. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked what you saw here, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell if you want to be uh, emailed or notified whenever I post a new video to the channel instead of having to wait for Facebook to do it. Uh, also, um, we have a podcast now, the Game of Ice and Fire podcast, and I'll leave a link to that in the description as well. And I have a Patreon that I want you to keep your eyes out for. I'm just going through the final touches to make sure everything is right for it. And uh, again, I appreciate you watching this, and I look forward to making the next video for you.